and welcome to episode six, six of Easy Like a Sunday Story. This week's story comes from a um, picture that I put out onto social media and I asked you lovely public to come forward with any words that it conjured up or anything that it conjured up for you and the response was the inspiration behind this story. So I'm really excited to bring that to you today. It's called No Regrets and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening. No Regrets. Olivia looked at the picture again. Oh, she hated social media for this. Well, for lots of things actually. Like how you subconsciously ended up on there, mindlessly scrolling through the same stuff that wasn't even interesting to you half an hour ago because you'd actually picked your phone up to check a date or the weather or something productive and then got sucked into an involuntary brain numbing vortex. Or the way that the news of everybody else's amazing lives made you feel inadequate, unlucky, jealous. But definitely one of the worst elements of social media was Facebook memories. Olivia knew people these days that used it as a filing technique. They'd say things like, I want to get reminded of this day in years to come and then post their child's first steps or first tooth lost. And that's fair enough. Probably safe to say that they will indeed want to be reminded of that in a year or two, forever, probably. But what about when you've lost someone? A best friend that stops speaking to you, a partner that you've split from or somebody passes away. Surely there's a strong chance that that's gonna catch people unawares? Olivia had braced herself for the big ones. She knew the photos from the night of the engagement announcement would sting, but she knew the date of that, so she took a, she took Facebook off her phone for a few days and managed to avoid it. And she was thankful that she'd overruled the decision to do the picture of the keys to our new home, saying it was too cheesy. Plus, she didn't want people to know where their front door looked like, in case they were then subsequently announced they were going on holiday and a thief in waiting put two and two together and robbed them. There were other photos, of course, like the pic of the glasses of champagne they drank that first night, surrounded by boxes. The dinner he'd made for them with the wedding mags in the background because he'd been so keen to get planning. The pics from the trip they made to Ireland where they found the land they were going to get married on. Those ones hadn't, she hadn't been able to avoid fully, but in expecting them she'd cushioned the blow. But this photo, which seemed like nothing out of the ordinary, had stopped her in her tracks. It was of the sea. It looked like a summer's day, but it wasn't. It had been bright but fresh, she remembered. One of those balmy autumn days. Mickey had had a couple of days without work. It often happened in his trade, so it wasn't a worry. But as someone who couldn't sit still, he was bored. He was so childlike in that way, impatient and excitable. It was endearing, but it also meant that he would tire of things easily. He'd woken up early, he'd brought Olivia breakfast in bed and announced, don't go to work today. She looked at him, stood in the door holding the tray, wearing his boxers, a pinny and Olivia's fluffy slippers. <laughs> You're crazy, she laughed. I mean it, Mickey said. Come on, we need to do something spontaneous. These four walls are driving me crazy. The sun's shining, let's go to the seaside. Olivia looked at him. He was so cute and mad and funny. She would have loved nothing more than to spend the day with him. But she'd never thrown a sickie in her life. She just couldn't do it. Come on, Livs. We don't get to spend any quality time together anymore. You work all the hours, then you're knackered, then we get a takeaway and watch TV. There you a day off, at least. She just couldn't say no to him. And he was right. She did work long hours. And they didn't do stuff anymore. Well, they'd been saving for the wedding and trying to pay off debts and it just all got a bit... serious. The caption on the picture was, Oh, such a perfect day. I'm glad I spent it with you, my bride-to-be. Mickey had posted it and tagged her in. Not on the actual day, of course, work would have seen. He'd saved it until the following weekend. 
But the truth was, they'd had an argument just after he'd taken that, and he'd posted it that weekend because he was still feeling bad about it. They never argued. Their thing was that they were just so perfect for each other. They were known for it. The envy of all their friends, married or single. Mickey and Liv's were a match made in heaven. They'd had chips and were sat on an old bath towel they'd brought with them, arm in arm, looking out to the sea. Olivia's head was on Mickey's shoulder and she felt so lucky she could pinch herself. She was so content. The warm autumn sun was beating down on her face and she closed her eyes. She had been working too hard. She could almost drift off to sleep. The carbs from the chips won't have helped. Come on, let's go in. Mickey sprang up excitedly. The sudden movement made her jump. In the sea? Are you joking? It's nearly November, Mick. So? Who's making the rules? Come on. His manner reminded her of a kid who'd just got to an adventure playground and was directing his friends to the best climbing frame, sort of urgent and authoritative, like, right, this way, follow me. We, we don't have a change of clothes. Or swimming costumes. We've got one towel between us, which we're sitting on, and it's covered in wet sand. Who cares, said Mickey, still in the stance of the kids at the playground. There's hardly anyone about. We can go in in our undies and go home commando. Come on, babe, live a little. Olivia was running out of excuses. No, I'm tired, Mick, and full after the chips. You go in, though. Ah, oh, when did you get so boring? You never want to do anything. Why can't you just be spontaneous for once? Mickey walked off along the beach in a huff. Months later, when they broke up, Olivia had convinced herself that this was the reason. That she wasn't fun enough for Mickey anymore. They hadn't argued. Nobody had been unfaithful. They still got along. They still loved each other. So she spent most of her time trying to work out why. Mickey had offered no additional information in this regard. He hadn't wanted to break up necessarily, just to not get married anymore. And it wasn't like she wanted to rush into the wedding. It had been him who'd asked her, he'd brought the wedding forward, he'd done most of the planning. For her, it was the fact that he'd changed his mind. The thing about them was that they were so right for each other. She still knew that she wanted to spend the rest of her life with him. If he didn't, then it really wasn't them anymore. The thing is, she'd always thought she was spontaneous. She'd done loads with her life. She was brave, she'd travelled, she lived in different cities, countries. She'd taken risks. Christ. She'd said yes to her marriage proposal when they hadn't even been together a year. But she also liked to be organised and plan. He never wanted to. It was their personality types. If you know Myers-Briggs, you'll know that someone with a, a P personality type doesn't like to commit to plans. They can feel anxious about agreeing to something in a, in a week's time because they don't know how they'll feel that day. They can feel anxious about talking what to have for dinner uh, at breakfast time because they don't know how they'll feel that evening. A J personality likes to book things like theatre tickets, holidays, have things to look forward to. They like to do a weekly shop and plan the special dinner they're going to cook for Saturday night on a Monday morning because it's better than concentrating on the team meeting. They were just different. And that's why they'd stopped doing things. He didn't like her planning and she didn't like jumping off the snug sofa to go and have a snowball fight on a whim because she wasn't prepared. So, they stopped doing stuff. And then he'd got bored and the magic disappeared only she'd gone in the water. That day would have been perfect, like his Facebook post said, instead of them travelling home together in silence. The photo reminded her of all the other times when she didn't do the thing that was fun or off the cuff. What about if she'd gone on bike rides in the rain? Tried wild camping like he'd wanted to? Gone walking at midnight to look at the moon? Would they still be together? It was quite devastating for somebody who'd always be regarded as quite fun to find out that she wasn't after all and it cost her her relationship. It might not have hit such a nerve if she hadn't wanted to go into the water that day. 
but she did. She really wanted to. Yes, she was she was dozy and warm and comfortable and, and the water would have been freezing. But of course she wanted to have fun and be exhilarated and wild. But her knee-jerk reaction had been to say no. Find the excuse until one was accepted. It's like, it's like wanting to dance but being too shy. Having to wait until you've had enough drinks to pluck up the courage. Or wanting to sing on karaoke or speak out in a crowd. You could almost do it but you stop yourself. Wanting to feel that water on your skin but pretending you're content just looking at it. Pretending that's enough. But it wasn't enough for Olivia. Watching others dance wasn't the same as moving your body to the music. Looking at the water wasn't the same as splashing around in it. The one thing that photo showed Olivia was regret. Not going for it. Whatever it was. The photo popping up on her screen felt like being grabbed by the collar and slapped around the face. She got a throbbing lump in her throat. A ball of emotion from the pit of her stomach and deep in her heart that was paralysing. She couldn't swallow it, speak or cry it out. This is what regret felt like. Olivia never wanted to feel it again. And vowed she wouldn't. She was sat pretty much in the exact same spot. She was a bit more organised this time. A flask of hot tea and biscuits, several towels, a mat to stand on and neoprene boots. She had a big changing robe which she was particularly pleased with and decided that she'd use it all the time, just out and about. It could be very handy for doing private admin, like sending confidential emails on the go or pulling your pants out of your bottom. She had a bright orange swimming hat and a bright red bobble hat and neoprene gloves. It was approaching high tide and she waited. She took a photo of her mat and her bits of kit on it with the sea in the background and checked into Margate Beach. This was a day that she wanted to be reminded of because she was sure that she'd be proud of herself. I'm going in, perfect day for it, her caption said. She poured herself a teeny tiny drop of tea. She should have brought more. She had no idea how long she'd have to wait and she knew it was important to have a hot drink afterwards. Well, the biscuits were safe because she felt too nervous to eat right now. She'd done lots of research about cold water swimming. All the gear she'd bought she'd learned about online. Acclimatising she'd learnt was best if you could swim through summer just to keep doing it so you naturally adapted to the water as it gets colder. Well. No such luxury for Olivia, so she'd been having cold showers daily and she'd dipped into the serpentine a few times over the last two weeks to help her adjust. But the sea, this patch of sea, was the real deal. The sand, the creatures, the tide, the horizon, they were all part of it. The last thing she needed, but didn't have, was someone to come with her. And you mustn't swim alone. The water can confuse you, you can get dizzy and disorientated. And of course, she didn't have anyone. There's another little, another little pang of thinking, if we were still together, this wouldn't be a problem. There have been so many things that she found out were harder when you're on your own. Yes, she had friends, but they wouldn't understand why she was doing it and they would have called her mad. She needed to do this for herself and not have anyone talk her out of it. It was about leaving her comfort zone, pushing her boundaries, being brave. So she'd come to the beach at high tide, hoping that there would be other crazy people, crazy enough to go sea swimming today, and she planned to bravely ask if she could tag along. She'd read that many people would gather across the coast at high tide and meet up, some in groups, some in pairs. She was starting to worry that chancing this element of it was a mistake. She'd hate another journey back from this beach, feeling disappointed. After almost an hour, she began to pack up her things. She was starting to feel the cold and the parking would soon be up on her car. She felt that horrible lump in her throat again. Regret could feel the same even when you hadn't been the cause of it. She'd wanted to. She was going to. It wasn't really her fault that nobody came. 
The lump of regret brought stinging tears to her eyes. A dog walker gave her a sympathetic smile and the dog started to bark really frantically. He didn't like her changing robe and bobble hat. Being barked at so aggressively, harmless as it was, tipped her over the edge and she started to cry. Thankfully the dog got distracted and it ran past her and started on someone else. It was going absolutely mad. As she looked up, she saw why. Coming down onto the beach at speed were two changing robe adorning swimmers with huge bobble hats. It was like a couple of Christmas trees or mountains were approaching. She knew how Macbeth felt now when the forecast, uh, when the forest made its way towards him. What to do? She was, she was ready to go home now. They looked in a hurry. She was cold. No, 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 no. Here were all her excuses again. Those things were true, but also, why was she here? To get out of her comfort zone. Come on, she said to herself. You can do this. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm new. I've never done this before. I've been waiting for somebody uh, to come. Uh, can I join you for a swim, please? Olivia blurted out at them while they were still in motion. Their routine was amazing, actually. She watched them in awe. Sure, come on in. You won't catch him, but I'm more of a bobber. You're totally welcome, the lady of the two said. They still hadn't stopped. They'd literally come down the hill, remove their robes while still walking, drop them and were in the water in one fell swoop. It was so impressive. Those who hesitate talk themselves out of it, the man said. If you can do this today, you can do anything. You'll be invincible for the rest of the day. Yep, yeah, it's got special powers, this water, said the lady. It took everything she had not to scream the beach down. There was definite gasping, some shrill noises muffled and out the side of her mouth, but not the full horror movie, movie sound effect that Olivia expected. It was exhilarating. It was freeing. It was sort of bigger than her, almost otherworldly. She felt a brilliant surge of emotion, but it was, it was happiness and pride, not sadness. You okay? The lady asked. Yes, it's just quite a big day for me today. Olivia half realised that the woman just meant was she okay in the water, not in her state of mind, but oh well, she'd said it anyway. Well, good for you, the woman said. We all bring our troubles here and they all wash away with the tide. Olivia felt astonishing. She felt alive. She had a, a clarity of mind that she hadn't had for a long time. Her smile beamed as she quickly changed and poured a cup of tea. She just couldn't stop it. Glad you did it, the man asked. Oh, absolutely. It was, it was fantastic. Thank you for letting me join you, Olivia replied. Any time. Save you waiting in future. Here's my number, or there's a Facebook page of different locations along this coast where people meet to swim. My name's Harriet, and this is Ted. Thank you. I, I live in London, but I do plan to get back here as often as I can, so I'll, I'll definitely give you a shout. Thanks so much. We have Lido's, but it's not the same as the sea. Nothing is, said Harriet. And almost as quick as they'd arrived and got wet, they were gone. Wow, they were smooth. Olivia sat to finish her tea for a few minutes and thought about what she'd done. Was it spontaneous? Well, no, in terms of thinking about it there and then and jumping straight in. But the decision to work towards it was. She'd decided in an instant that she'd do it. She didn't weigh up the options of pros and cons. She had a plan to do it and to do it safely. And she had to acclimatise so that she enjoyed it. She was bold and brave and spontaneous in her way. It wasn't wrong, it was just different from Mickey's. It was never that she wasn't fun, it was that they just had different ways of appreciating things. It was just that she never wanted to do it his way. Did you go in? said a voice behind her. 
Her stomach leapt. It was Mickey. I did, she replied, suddenly aware that she had swimming hat hair, no makeup, and was wearing a tent. You were the last person I expected to see here, she said. I saw your Facebook post and I took it as a signal that it would be okay to come and see you. I thought maybe you'd come back here because you wanted to think about us. That was such an amazing day we had, wasn't it? Nikki sat down beside her. Yeah, until we argued because I wouldn't go in the water, said Olivia, rolling her eyes and looking away from him. Did we? said Nikki. I don't remember that. Just remember coming down here on a whim and the sun shining and us having a right laugh. He didn't remember. It is so strange what our mind and memories do to us. He'd not thought anything of it and she'd been unable to think of anything else. Oh, I, I thought it was a real turning point, the, the start of us breaking up, she said. Only she don't remember it, babe, he said as if she'd said something so tiny, so insignificant. She might as well have said, do you remember that bloke that had a blue jumper on once? She'd spent all this time thinking that she wasn't enough for him. And he didn't have a clue what she was on about. You have to try and stop worrying and working out what went wrong, he said. You've got to move forward, not keep looking back. She felt suddenly really angry. She wouldn't have to work out what went wrong if he'd given her any indication as to why things had changed. But he wouldn't. He'd gone from full steam ahead to stop the bridges broken overnight, with no explanation. One thing she did know, however, was that today wasn't going to be about him. It was going to be about her achievement, her freedom. The last 10 months had been about him. This was her moment. Nick, what are you doing here? Like I said, I, I just thought you came here to reminisce and I miss you. She got straight to the point, untouched by his words. Have you changed your mind or how you feel about our relationship or do you have any new information, she asked matter of factly. <laughs> new information? What is this? He didn't seem to like the line of inquiry. Are you either here to say that you made a mistake and have changed your mind, or that you worked out what went wrong and came to give me some closure? If the answer to both of those things is no, then I'm gonna go because I've drunk a whole flask of tea and I really need a pee. Lives. He used that tone that he used to use to get around her. She knew the answer. She knew he missed her, but he'd made a choice and he didn't get to pop into her life unannounced whenever he felt like it. They were over and nothing was going to change. And she decided then and there to accept it. At least now she knew that it wasn't because she was too dull. And she decided there and then not to keep trying to work it out. How was that for spontaneous? You need to move forward, Mick not keep looking back. She gave him a salty wet kiss on the cheek and left. Harriet and Ted were right. She could do anything. She was invincible. Maybe the water did have special powers after all. The end. Mm -hmm.